So we're here at the Broad Museum, the, where the Jasper John Something Resembling Truth exhibition is underway, and we are lucky enough to have Art Center professor and Jasper John's collaborator, Tony Zapeda, master printmaker, to just basically walk us through the show, share his impressions and recollections. And that's it. Here we are with Tony. Hi. So, um, <laughs> why don't we just start with... Walk around. I, I yeah. Yeah. Nineteen fifty-nine. What I remember is like he had his first show at Castelli in nineteen fifty-nine. I don't know which paintings there are. I'm sure that one over there, that that American flag. But you know, it, it, you know, it's just basically. He said he had a dream. Have you heard the story? No. He said he had a dream that he painted a flag. And he got up the next day and he went and he made the flag. I don't know which one it is. It could be that one. If I look at it. What, uh, what, I, what I remember him saying in an interview was that they use rotten materials. Like uh. Newsprint and, and uh, bed sheet. And I don't know which one. I mean, he's done so many. I, I, mean, I think he's done like... Seventy-five flags, something wow. more like it from what I was reading yesterday. But a lot of it is collage, and basically, um, this one's encaustic. Some are oil. Not too many acrylic paintings. He's mostly into oil, uh, encaustic, gouache, graphite, graphite washes. Does a lot of things on. Uh, frosted mylar, it's like a vellum with these Quran dash crayons that I went and bought for him one time when I was staying at his house. I said, what do you need? Because I was staying at his house. I traveled with him one time too. Where did you go? Uh, we went, drove from LA to um, Denver. And... Um, did you have some adventures? Yeah, we were with was this guy. He's, he's married to Caroline Kennedy. I forget his name right now, but he used to be um, Buckminster Fuller's assistant. So funny story is we were driving through the desert, and I'll never forget this. And, and what the hell's it? I'll, I'll remember his name later. But like uh, the the poet, this kid who not kid, he was you know someone who worked with Jasper, knew Jasper. Frank O'Hara? No, no, no. He's a um, younger, but he was naming off the names of all the cactus in the desert in Latin. <laughs> and so, Jeff and I was amazed. I was, you know, fairly young. And when um, the poet left the car for a moment, I said to Jasper, I said, God, that's amazing. He knows all the names of all the plants in Latin, the desert plants, and Jasper said, does he? <laughs> <laughs> that always, always made me think, uh, made me think uh, maybe what everyone says is maybe not true. He was a skeptic. So tell us, tell us about what you first remember from working with him, and then we can sort of... Well, the first thing was a sense, you know, here I was in the room with him, and I would, it's basically when I began working at Gemini, which is a fine art publishing house, and Jasper Johns came there one day, and some of the other printers had been there for 10 years before me, and, and one printer in particular said, whatever you do, don't talk to the artist. And I thought, okay. And so... Jasper Johns was right here. And would you not introduce yourself to this man? So I didn't pay any attention to, and I introduced myself, and we became, it was nice. You know, we became, you know, I didn't bother him. It was just, um, I was the new guy. I was the plebe. Right. And, um, you were the young upstart. I was the, the sponger. And, you know, we, do, we were doing lithography. And when you do lithography, 
there's a printer and there's a sponger. A sponger means you're assisting. So I was an assistant folding rags. Wow. I had an MFA and <laughs> I just started working there. But there's a there's a painting here. I hope they have it here. It's called uh, Untitled yeah. 1972. Mm -hmm. Do you wait? Do you want to show this one to sort of give a oh, perspective? Oh, this one here. I always like seeing these paintings that have the, the faucet and the basket and the reason is the basket. And the Hornet Newman print. Because I stayed at Jasper's house one time and I took a bath in that bathtub. And so it's good. Kind of, every time I see that, I remember I'm thinking I'm sitting in Jasper John's bathtub. It's more than just a stone. Yeah, and, and, and I always thought, <laughs> yeah, when, when we were in, um, we went, when he lived in Stony Point, we had a little tiny studio that was a 20 foot square. Yeah. Which you would think, right, you would think that he would just yeah. build another floor because he certainly could afford it. But that was his thing with remaining humble. Well, he had a really simple. beautiful garden outside of that that structure. You know, big, fire doors that would come up so it was all garden nice. and, and upstream. It was gorgeous. Stony Point. I don't know if it's changed. I think it's changed now. But like, you know, here's like where he... Oil over collage, but you see how all that oil... Apparently you don't care. You know, but the oil eats the paper if you don't coat it. But... That's a Jasper John's where the oil is eating the paper, but I'm, I'm sure it's... He likes showing the process. Was that part yeah, of his thing? Yeah. I mean, basically, what I learned was that you know, he, he took a well-known object. You don't have to worry about the subject matter. That is the subject matter. And the way he makes it his are those strokes. Yeah. That's the painting, and the subject matter is just a common object that everybody sees, like a coat hanger. Right, yeah. Well, let's go see. I think there are a few coat hangers. <laughs> I, just, I thought you were famous. <laughs> no. <laughs> and this one... This is one of my favorites. And like a, actually, my friend Charlie Ritt printed the lithograph of this, which is probably about that size, but I had it in my house for a couple of months. Wow. Gorgeous. Yeah. You know what I really like? Since my last name starts with Z. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but basically, um, you know, these are all done with stencils yeah. and collage and then encaustic and, you know, basically nobody did encaustic since Egypt, you know, on a sarcophagi. And just, you know, this Graphite washes with turpentine, probably. Oh, yeah. See, I'm really into process. Um, yeah. That's my thing. And... Um, like recently I've been doing some paintings with ch really cheap Chinese ink and you sprinkle salt on it and it disperses and there's all this weird configuration. I learned a lot of it from him and Rauschenberg. They experiment, you know. He's a little more you know, um, control. At most of, you know, with these, I was just reading about these. Um, uh, most numerals are just seven black, right? And then, but this one did it with collage. Yeah. So it just kind of, you're not looking at that, you're looking at that. He calls these figures, yes. figure seven. You can see his hand in there. Yeah, so, but basically these were like things that he was, he was relating to de Kooning. Uh -huh. De Kooning figure paintings of Marilyn Monroe. These are his fingers. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I read. 
And so, you know, I never knew that either. But like uh, my friend, uh, I think they had number seven screen here. The last thing was a classic. To me, these are all related to Marcel Duchamp. Yeah. Personally, that's what I think. Right. And, you know, especially like that, uh, there's a piece that Marcel Duchamp made. It's called Female Fig Leaf. Mm -hmm. The bottom of it looks like a piece of bread, and it's an impression of a um, genital area of a female. Yes. And I, I saw it at Jasper's house Again. on the shelf. An object art, which is another Marcel Duchamp ready-made. Mm -hmm. I'm just holding it. Right. <laughs> Here it's, it is. <laughs> it's again like the everyday object. And yeah. How the artist interacts with them. There's there's a, some beer cans here that, that have a funny story. Where he, and then we'll see him later probably, but like basically, De Kooning was pissed off that Jasper Johns could sell anything. Sold his first show out to the Whitney or the Modern, yeah. and and uh, De Kooning said that son of a bitch could sell some beer cans. So <laughs> there, there's actually a, a movie. <laughs> there's a movie about New York in the in the '60s and the interview with Jasper Johns. And he, so he went and he made a couple of beer cans, Valentine's ale cans. And of and course, they sold. sold the hell out of them. <laughs> <laughs> this, you think this, he was surprised at the commercial popularity of his work? No, I was just like, one time I was at the, I went to the movies with him. He was complaining about the price of milk. Yeah. And, I was just, and in the movie, just by coincidence, there was about this couple that were getting a divorce and they were splitting up all of their material goods. Yeah. And um, on the wall in the apartment was a Jasper Johns poster. We were sitting there. <laughs> and and, and they were going, well, want these photos? And Jasper said, what about the poster? <laughs> This is sculpt metal, which is something that I like. A, I bought one time. I never used it, but basically, this material comes like a paste. It smells like resin. It's basically aluminum powder mixed with a resin. Really smelly. But this is this is kind of an offshoot of of encaustic. And and, and then later at Gemini, they they made some. I don't know where they are, but they're in there somewhere. They made some lead reliefs. And I'll show you, and I'll talk more about those. Okay. But the, you know, these are like... Yeah, I'm in this. Come on. I have some notes here about something. This is I don't want to get too carried away with notes, because it's kind of boring. But like... Um, sit. It integrated the figure into its surroundings and presented it as a distinctly formed shape independent of its ground. Let's talk about these. Oh, yeah. Yeah. As a, the lady of oh, yeah. oh, yeah. These are the things I really like. But see, see, these are like, this is ink on plastic. This is like, uh, one of the things I really love. So, so basically, and I do this sometimes, you make shapes. So you don't have to be concerned about this shape, even though, of course, the other is zero through nine, and that's one of his iconographic images. Yeah. And you just go in there and you paint it. Right. In the, it's kind of like you're making a... I do it all the time. And what about this? Uh, oh, that's just... Inkling. He calls those free drawing. <laughs> <laughs> that's what Rajamur calls them. Like, like your little block. A map. Oh, my God. Yeah, I really like his maps. Like, Gagosian Gallery's got like this really uh, cool uh, 
book on the map, so I'll bring it to all of the map. Well, they're probably here. Oh, they're big ones. Yeah. Always amused me, the, you know, like critics of the. I, have, I don't know much about critics. I just know that like, seems like they're like my dentist. He's a frustrated artist. You know what I mean? Right. He wants to be an yeah. artist. My dentist. <laughs> we live in Los Angeles. Yeah. Hi. Escalt metal as well. I think these are some. I've never seen these. Yeah. Yeah. Like, look at Kalad. I thought they were. That, that's another one of the sculpt metal pieces. That, I think he did it at, uh, at the Opera House, maybe? At the State Theater at Lincoln Center. So this was a commission by them? But it feels a little less. These are more recent. That they just had at Gagosian in um, Beverly Hills. Like last Good. last year, two years ago. So we went back to the numbers. It always back. goes back to different things, and sometimes yeah. I I wonder, you know, you know, who might have questioned it. But like, um, there have been times when I when I have thought whatever, and then a year later I go, oh, now I get it. Like right. the flagstone motif, which is probably in another one. Well, so what do you think about the part? I actually like. The ones with the the uh, faces, there's there's like uh, the early ones that he did that has a, a box where there's sculpture, several pieces. There's like a hand and a face and a penis and and a and a male nipple and a, a heel, and then there's a bone which is supposed to suggest female genitalia. Or something. I don't know, it didn't look like female genitalia to me, but it, it was rejected because yeah. it had a penis in it huh. and they wanted him to close it and he wouldn't do that so nobody bought it for a long time and now 59. Wow. Okay. I mean he sold one of those flag paintings for yeah. $900 in 1959. Wow and then everything changed. Yeah, the, yeah. And the museum bought it, Museum of Modern Art. And Philip Johnson, the architect. Yeah. He's a big one boy. time he came to the shop, Philip Johnson. Yeah. It's a towering right. vibration from the and he had a beautiful suede coat on and I was mixing some ink and I went <laughs> ink all over <laughs> his suede jacket. I just, it just felt like such an idiot. First time I saw that painting was at uh, Marsha Weissman's house, I think that's the one she owned. Yeah, that's the one. And like, I just fell in love with it. It was above her couch. Yeah. And she had a Barnett Newman sculpture in the entryway. You know Marsha Weissman? She's a big collector, right? She's uh, Norton Simon's sister. Oh, okay. And Fred Weissman was a big collector. My ex-girlfriend worked for them, so I had access. Wow. So you go to the house, and so when I'm young, and yeah. you know, walk into some. Very seldom do I walk into someone's house who owns a Jasper Johns map, mm -hmm. right you know, above the couch. This one. This yeah. one. Right. And then so I'm sitting on the couch and <laughs> touching it. I'm thinking, shit. I love the I love the maps. But, I just love the whole idea. What's so interesting and amazing, though, about your relationship to him is that every you can't really look at anything Jasper Johns made without thinking about process. Yeah. And you were really a part of his process. Uh, I was yeah. like a part of like a, the printers at ULE or Gemini. You, you kind of um, you assist the artist, you know, no matter who you're working with, mm -hmm. and some are more inventive than others. Yeah. Like him. Right. When he comes, it's like, 
when I was work, working, a Japanese friend of mine um, who came to Gemini, he had worked at Tamarind, which was a, a training school for lithography. Uh, I tried to get in there and uh, they didn't have room for a year and then I got a job at, at uh, Gemini. And so I was happy that I could say I already have a job. Right. But I probably could have learned from uh, Cameron. Yeah. But um, my Japanese friend showed up and then I was working with Jasper Johns on a weekend doing some small numerals, prints. And I called my friend Yasutoshi Ishibashi. He's a really good lithography printer. He lives in Tokyo. I said, Yashi, you want to come and work with Jasper Johns today? Uh, don't, quit kidding, Tony. I said, no, really? Come on. Because I knew he wouldn't have another chance. It blew his mind. You know, it's like... Uh. So these are, these are bronze. And these are recent. But the guy's 80-something. Eight, it's amazing. You know, he's able to go back and find something new to say. You know what yeah. I mean? You know, like these, you know, I was like, I'm no expert on this, but I was reading about, you know, uh, the woman who wrote this this uh, really great uh, catalog, this mm -hmm. book, I mean, you should get one, it's really nice. Um, we're talking about how the strokes are becoming more, rather than super controlled, they're becoming more uh, erratic. As it goes, like in, in yeah. like the 70s. Which is the opposite. And then, then, and, like, and then later, they become more controlled. Mm -hmm. That's really but like, you know, that kind of stuff there, I remember watching him do a, do a, a, um, a drawing on a lithographic plate, which you draw with a grease crayon, lithographic grease crayon, and, and then you process it with gum arabic and acid and wash it out and roll it up and... Just amazing to be and the able, way he just to watch. I was watching yeah. him for every time he was there. I would watch him, you know. What was sort of the thing that struck you the most about his specific process? You know, as opposed to some of the other. Uh, he would always tell. He always tells me that he doesn't have any ideas. When I when I would ask him if he was coming to Gemini, this is several years ago. Oh, I don't have any ideas, and I'm thinking. I don't think so. <laughs> you know, it's just like, look at, yeah. you know, this is one of them. Let's hope he never has another idea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it scares people, I think. Yeah. But like the, the, um, actually, I found, a, I found a Target print that uh, he did for Merce Cunningham that I thought I had lost. I just found it last month in a box. And it's like this, but it's, it's like an offset. Um, lithograph that they made for Merce Cunningham dance performance. And you kept. Oh my god. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. Because he wanted to renew, what was it he said? He wanted to start fresh. Right. So that's one of the things that remains from, from those days. There's another wow. painting around here. That painting there? That, yeah. Geffen bought that painting for 34 million and about. Four or five years ago, it sold for eighty-five point three million dollars. So Geffen already turned it around and sold it to wow. another hedge fund guy, somebody. Wow. See, there's the Blackstone images. Those, that's a fairly new painting. Oh, yeah. oh, come here. Look at this one. This is cool. Tom coming out? The tongue coming out. Yeah, yeah. But this is his teeth. Yes, it's amazing. Yeah. How did 
did you do this? How could he be so productive? I don't know. I worked with him before, and I just uh, still don't get it. <laughs> but <laughs> actually, actually, I was at his house one time, and I was looking in a magazine, and I said, "Wow, look at this weird painting." And he said, "Show me." And I, he, said, he said, "That's mine." <laughs> but um, I thought that's a very uh, that's an intense painting. Interesting. But it's funny that I was at his house and I said, what is this? I was just Mine. thinking, God, this is weird. And he goes, let me see. But that one, some uh, a lady who happened to be, I mean, a lady who happened to be, I forget what her name was, but she happened to be Jewish. And he said he threw away an image that was a cross shape. and. I think he has shows at the Jewish Museum or something in New York, I mean, I wasn't there. Yeah. But um, she said, if, if you would have made it the Star of David, I would have bought it. So he went out and he made one. So this is, this is glass. In oh. here. Yeah. And encaustic. <laughs> collage, encaustic and collage on canvas with glass. And kind of like... People would maybe, I guess people would, it happens with me sometimes, I suggest something and you ponder over it and maybe it's okay. Well, what's so great is like, you see all these familiar things as if you're seeing them for the first time in the Jasper Jones show. And like that, um, that hanger painting, did you want to like... This one, always, that, yeah. that book always gave me the creeps. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it just reminds me of things yeah. from World War II. Right. But um, yeah. it's a meat hook. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Know? And uh, it doesn't look like a coat hanger. But this one does. Yeah. yeah for sure. But he made some prints that use that coat hanger motif. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. Do they have prints in the show? Do they they have? I think they might. Have. About that. Was, this whole thing scared okay, me. Okay, you're pretty good. For life. <laughs> There you go. You're okay. Kick, kick it in gear. We're like... We ready? Yeah. Okay. So, one of the things that, like, I really like, and it's in another painting called Watchmen, which is probably in another room, but he used, his use of, of uh, these devices, like, that's a device that he can use to move the... It's just a stick. Right. But it's a yardstick, you know, and then he uses it over there. Yeah. And over there. So in order to make those shapes, he attaches. I made a print yeah. one time. It was called Double Device. For it's him. the same motif. I mean, he's done it several times. Yeah. Right. So he basically uses the tools and then incorporates tools them from the, the studio work. and puts it in his painting. <laughs> you know. And. Waste not. Like this one, over here. You know, depending on how you light it, mm -hmm. you know, that the arc is constantly changing. You know, look at it. Okay. It's moving, as a, which I, I think is into that. Yeah. So that's what this whole This thing is the cat one. He did like several of these. I still don't know what to think exactly of these paintings. But like, you know, he has the objects that like protrude from the canvas and the string hanging, you know, and this is probably, I don't know if it's encaustic. Yeah, encaustic. Encaustic is this weird medium. And supposedly, well, I've done some, not like him, but I've done some, and the, the um, beauty of encaustic is that it dries rapidly. As soon as the wax is hardened, you can go back on top. So As this is layers to, and layers here? Oh, yeah. So oil paint, if he puts a light gray down, you can't go back onto the oil paint until it dries for at least a day, or otherwise you smear it. Huh. But unless you want it to smear it, right. which is like a different thing. You know, that's actually kind of interesting to look at this painting over here and wondering why it's $5 million. 
But um, Let's see if we can figure it out. Yeah. Oh, so I was reading about this, and it's basically this. What did somebody said? There was a critic, and he said. A tissue of conflicts between what is read and what is seen. So basi basically, these are a tissue of conflicts between what is read and what is seen. Because mm -hmm. like you basically, it says yellow, but that letter is not yellow. So why does it say yellow? Right. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty much it's a tissue of conflicts. So <laughs> it's kind of yeah. Plays games with your mind. You know, yeah. like it says red, but it's not red. Right. And that one says blue, but it's not blue. And that says orange, but it's not orange. So why does that do that? Right. Why are you doing exactly. that? And then he said that there's he had violet in here. So there's one V somewhere. I don't know where it is. Somewhere. There's a V for violet. <laughs> Because <laughs> he didn't use very much violet, but basically they're relating these. They're relating. They're relating this painting to Monet's uh, cathedral paintings, the impressionistic cathedral paintings, because it's impressionistic. Right. I think. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I should ask him. You know, he would know more about it than me. And these are flagstones, and this is on another painting, and these are the shapes that I, I thought, hey, why is he using this mundane shapes? Yeah. And so basically I asked him, and he said he was uh, driving across the Brooklyn Bridge, or no, not the Bridge, he was in Harlem, and he saw this, and they were painted, um, flagstones, you know, those kind yeah. of the concrete, yeah. and they make impressions, and, yeah. and then he went back, and it was gone. And then he started doing flagstones in his pieces. And so they're, I guess, to me, it's a street related, you know, it's like. Um, yeah, and the, the colors of street art. Mm -hmm. What do you think this is? Sort of I think that's kind of like a. This is 2006, so it looks yes. like it's the string motif is a precursor to the catenary painting. Ah. And then this one has got a thermometer in it. Then for placement, they said that he put tacks in there. And this is Fahrenheit. Oh wow! It's like a game. Yeah. He plays a game. Right. Makes it fun for him. Right. There's one painting here that was in his drawing show, and it's basically a small rendition of Untitled 1972, which is one of my favorite paintings by Jasper Johns. He took rust from a can in his studio. Oh, this is my friend Jacob Samuel. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi. Master printer. Wow. Master blaster. That's me. I was just thinking how much I want to speak with you about this exhibition. I'm seeing it today, I'm going to see it tomorrow. Real good. Ooh, people from Art Center. Good timing. Yo. Yeah. Are you enjoying it? Oh, I love it. You like Jasper really Johns? Good. Yeah, yeah, particularly this show. This particularly show is... certain works, particularly drawings. The drawings at the end? Well, I know, I was thinking of that room there, that large. About time. Right here? Engrossed in some work? No, I used to work with him at Gemini. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jacob, Jacob. Jacob. This one. Yeah. This one. Oh, yeah. Sure. I was telling him that, that I was at his house and I was looking at a magazine and I said, that's weird. He goes, that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think about these? I haven't been in this room yet. Jacob initially oh, this, prints intaglio prints. And the guy that printed these is Jacob's hero and my hero. But Who's that? He would only have yeah. all the from them. Uh -huh. So, like, if you want to make really cool etchings, this is 
where you start. <laughs> this is a. This is just to keep everybody, keeps everybody humble. This guy worked with Picasso only. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He did seven hundred and fifty French with Picasso. Wow. Jacob yeah. so Samuel. So special. Well, um, flawless technique, and he, and he, he invented just tons of things. I'll tell you what makes his work special, if you don't mind my saying. Please do. The same thing that makes this guy special is he'll go to any lengths to get it right. And chromal ink, I mean, the aquatins, I mean, all these different, I mean, like, you know, he always left the, the plate in the aquatin box all night. Every, you know, I mean, just, yeah. you know, every, oh, I'll tell you something else special. You, you probably did this. But it is that is that he didn't do stepped aquatins. So when you have a gray, you know, on like every one, you can take out, clean the plate, repaint the whole thing out, Crazy, and do man. another one. Yeah. Okay, aquatint, yeah. etching. <laughs> You've got this box full of powder yeah. with a fan. You put the plate in there, the dust falls on it. Then you process it. So if I want that, I process all that. But what he does, this guy, is he still alive? No, he's dead. Yeah, he died in 2006. What he does is he'll process it and then he aqua tints it again, which is something it's most so people extreme. don't do. <laughs> it's, it's like really? it's beyond extreme. Because it's so labor intensive. Yeah, but he just, yeah. did, he just did a print with it. Who was that guy? Jonas Wood. Jonas Wood with 12. How many layers? Uh, it's like eight. Only eight. Only eight. Um, but I did eight, it the same uh, way. It was, it's a tribute to Chromalink. Because I made I made so the, the same obsessive. way. Yeah, yes. yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> crazy. No, like I was just arguing with one of my TAs about a photo plate because he messed it up, and we're in a beef right now. Because mm -hmm. I was standing there looking, and he he burned it. He he wasted it. And I said, "You wasted it." And he said, "Oh, we can fix it." And I said, "No, you can't." Yeah. So we got into like you know, and it was like. What can I say? I reduced a, a student to tears uh, last week. <laughs> what happened? Well, I can tell you it had to do with Aquatint. I said, remember, you know, after you take it out of the water bath, you have to air dry it because if you blot it, you're going dis to disrupt the, the rosin grains, you know? So I walked into the massive room and it. she was blotting it and I screamed. <laughs> she started crying. I'm, like, I'm so <laughs> sorry. See, we're like, like you <laughs> etching and lithography. And I'm sure casting bronze will make you nuts. <laughs> it, it's only for certain. You have to be an obsessive. Obsessive will make you. <laughs> so anyway, you two met at Gemini. Before Gemini. Before yeah. Gemini. Yeah. yeah. And then I got him in there, and then yeah. he worked for Sam Francis for years and years, and then he years. opened his wow. own shop, yeah. uh, JacobSamuel.com. You still have that shop? No. <laughs> He's retired now. I teach you UCLA. Huh? He just had I a big see. show at. Uh, the hammer and this great. I want it, but I want it. Yeah, heck yes. Yeah. <laughs> I like it like this. Yeah, not in that. See, like this is a book. You know, you do this tour. This is a, I'll catch a tour. You know, I'm trying to like. I've been afraid of this whole thing for no, a month. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so like this is this is a book he did with uh, Samuel Beckett. Did I tell you this story? Let's hear it. Where, <laughs> Like I said to I said to him, you know, he was doing this while we were working on some other thing, and I said, um, so, what's Samuel Beckett like? Because he's kind of one of my heroes. Yeah. <laughs> and and I said, well, what does he talk about? And he says, um, he talks about the racetrack, and that's it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and these are fizzles, which basically are like uh, things that he never published. And then Jasper Johns made images relating to the fizzles. Uh, poems. Have you read all the text? Huh? Have you read all the text? No, I didn't read it ever. <laughs> <laughs> Have you read it? We just look at the pictures. I just look at the pictures. My wife, my wife's literary. She'll, she'll read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah. So I, I'd like to own like some of these pages, but like, see, like this kind of stuff here, where it's lighter. He probably sanded that to make it lighter, and then he went back and did another aqua tent and got that. This is sugar lift. That's like, I don't know how he got lighter in here. What do you think, he sanded yeah, it a little bit? Maybe a little, I think he got sanding actually. Yeah, this is like body cast from Untitled from 1972, and then that, that um, flagstone imagery. 
This is similar to some of the really early stuff he did at ULE, which were just like little line drawings. And like here's a soft ground of his face. Maybe that's his face, who knows? Sugar Lift photograph here, which is like a basically a two-day process. Soft ground, burnishing, scraping, sugar lift, color, aqua tint. But these came out, I forget what they were. How much were these, like 12 grand when they came out? Not even. <laughs> not, not even. It's like 12 grand. When it was released. Yeah. I don't know what it is now. A lot. A lot. <laughs> but this, this set is pristine. Yeah. yeah. I love it. It's weird that you're here the same day. I am. Huh? Serendipity. I was thinking about it the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so you know, I did a print like that once. So I don't. Yeah. I, yeah. And that's like that stuff. That's related to Hart Crane, the poet. Oh yeah. Who's kind of like really depressed. Uh, he was like really into Whitman. I was reading about Hart Crane and how his mother was manic depressive and like kind of kept him yeah. secluded. And I haven't right. read much of Hart Crane. So he had a real relationship with writers, which was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But this, I saw this in a show at Castelli in New York, and the, there were all of these, these crosshatch paintings with the modified. Uh, flagstones. Oh, yeah. This show was amazing. The room is like really light, you know, like this This one, we did a print that's, a, I'll show you, but it's on the cover of a, uh, Gemini had a, a, I don't know, what, 35 years, 40 years at the Smithsonian, and um, this print is on the cover and I help work on it. I, I own two of them. I own a color version and a black and white version which is at the shop. It when is. you go back you can see oh, it. Yeah. And you know it's just basically how, how you know to me by working on prints I kind of discovered how he works on a painting you know this one has like a, a background yeah. and then foreground and he, he would do the same thing when he, when he makes a print. But, yeah. So like, what's that little icon here? There's no photo. Uh, does that say no photo? I don't know. Is that what that means? No, that's one where they have, if you have the guy, if you have the guy, you're allowed to photo. But, um, yeah, so, so basically when I, when I worked on this print, we worked on a couple of them. So we had like a, a background color and then the foreground color, which would maybe be the, the lettering and the blue coming down here. And then we got the device shape again coming in and kind of recurring right. imagery. And the lettering, you know, from the... Um, tissue or the yeah. whatever, you know, so like this will be on the yellow, yeah. and like when you read it, it throws, it messes with your head, me, right. because it's, maybe they have a color print here, but if we're lucky. But this is kind of the version of reality you believe. Something, I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's just, and then like, I like the fact that like quite often he, well like, see this here? That's a stamp from the female fig leaf by Duchamp that he has on the shelf. Wow. Incredible. That I was at his house one time and I'm holding it and I go, is this real? He goes, yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, he had the object dart on yeah. this little shelf and, a, and a, a, a lead plug for the sink that Duchamp made with ball bearings and yeah, lead. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm going, oh. And you're holding it, you know what I mean? Cool. But that's a stamp. And that relates to the bread. Oh, yeah. Okay. The bread, yeah. Which is weird. <laughs> but it does, I yeah. think. Yeah. And, you know, then, you know, 
on campus, which is like, you know, he kind of dragged me into that because, um, you know, I, I'm assuming, I don't know what year, what year you think Rushenberg and him were like around, hanging around together? 56, 57, 60, 80, uh, 20 years, 10 years, something. But anyway, so Rushenberg used a lot of silk screen paintings and like I'm sure it influenced Casper. Stuff was probably around upstairs. I don't know where their studios were. You know, here's graphite wash. Hmm. Voice. And then there's another these are Oh, these are older. These are from 82. Well, newer than the other ones. But like, they're basically, he's got big paintings of this and also big lithographs uh, of this. And then, you know, basically the similar style of working, yeah. but each color would be a separate plate. And then you would print each color and um, you'd have multiples you know and the only advantage of a multiple is that this is really expensive and the multiple might not be as expensive mm. uh the last thing that i looked at that i thought i might want to buy i thought okay maybe it'll be like maybe it'll be 15 to twenty thousand. maybe i can do it it was forty-eight thousand. Huh. current fair market value first release when was that a couple of years ago. Uh, I have one of the device prints that's worth 98000 uh, On and off. Great. You know, it varies. It's like wow. property. Yeah, it is. Mm. Better than property. And this is newer. I, I still don't know what to think of this, but this is... This is Intaglio. So that's Aquatint with soft ground. He's, he works with a... What's the name of that guy he works with? God is the name. But he works with a really good printer. I think the guy's been tired. Yeah. But like the, the uh, intaglio printing really takes its toll on your body. Right, Jake? Yes. And uh, <laughs> it's just like a lot of, you know, wiping. Like that's a big plate. Yeah. That's like, that's an hour's worth of wiping for sure. For each print. Each print. And probably, a couple of weeks of processing, you know, which is, yeah. you want to play, you got to pay. But basically, uh, there's a, yeah, this painting, mm -hmm. Celine on the other side. I'm not sure. If, I think that one was in the show. Which show? Uh, the one that I saw at Castelli. Oh, okay. and, left, and like that, I saw the sketch in his notebook one day at his house. <laughs> and then ten years later, he made the painting. That's you know, which is there. And it, huh. I think it's it's called uh, Dancers on a Plane. How are we doing? Um, going someone on commented saying they love the stories you're telling. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love it. So this is a really early piece of... He basically put um, oil on the, on the vellum, and then he put um, powder on his face. Mm. You're kidding. No. Wow. I mean, like, I'm surprised that it's not more yellow. Yeah, that's right. But, and then, and then I think he, I'm pretty sure he made a lithograph similar to that. It's just like, kind of, nice. Yeah. Huh. People like the stories I've been telling. Them. They do yeah. like the story. We're going to skip that one. Though. Yeah, we have to skip it. It's, uh, no, it's yeah, look at that one. That's one of my favorite, Usuyuki. This one is uh, 
watercolor. Really nice. Between the clock and the bed, which is basically if there's a painting by Edward Monk and I think it's called Between the Clock and the Bed. Yeah. And on the bedspread is a crosshatch pattern. And that's where he got the title. <laughs> you can see it. Oh, this is so interesting. I love it. Show the title. Yeah. yeah sh Show yeah. the title. <laughs> But basically, he came to Gemini one time, and he made this as a lithograph. Not quite so big. Yeah. And then, um, here, move this. And then, so basically, most of the time you do six or seven prints yes. in a series. So what he did was he made one like this on a 22 by 30 piece of paper. He made one that was two of these squares. He made one that was three of these Tony, squares. Tony, I have a surprise for you. Huh? Our center How are you? You made my class last term. So then, so, and then he made one that had two, two squares going out this way. And, and basically, when uh, we were there, when you're at, I didn't print this, I printed the one that had the thing here. So when you're, we were there, we had the um, opportunity at a discount to buy the print. So my brother and I bought this print. That's so great. Yeah. still have it. Yeah, it's worth around. It varies. It goes from thirty to 40000 depending on the current fair market value. Do you have more Jasper John stuff than any of the other artists? I've got a lot of Rauschenberg and a lot of Jaspers. i got about... 12 or 13 Jasper Dons prints. Yeah. Which I wish I had more. I wish I had some of those etchings. And you were in the right place. Well, the other people were in, in a better place than me. But, see that over there? But basically, you know, this one, that one, if you saw them all in the same room, I mean, it's such a, a big deal. And then, then he... This one? On this wall? Far wall. Okay, thank you. That's the painting that was on the poster in the movie. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> he said, what about the painting? What a great end to the story. So the movie... Uh, so we went to the movies, and there, the couple was breaking up, and they were splitting up their goods, and there was a poster on the wall in the stairwell, and that poster, that painting was a poster on the wall in the stairwell. And, He's and at I, the movies with I'm Jasper and John. Jasper, and he said, and they were, you know, you take this photograph, you take this one, and he said, well, what, what about the, the Jasper Johns poster? Because they, they left that on the wall. <laughs> Nobody wanted it. <laughs> oh, here are the beer cans. Yeah, this this is a early. Yeah, that's a lithograph done at ULA. That this one is like mm. really expensive. I, I have one that I did. That's this is like early Johns at ULA, which is. The value of early John's prints from ULE is much more than any other place hmm. because I guess they're unique and the first. Right. And he didn't do that again. He tied it Yeah, I mean, the one I have, a lithograph, is similar to that, which is nice, but like, that's the one I like. What I like is the sculpture. Yeah. You know, but like, I don't know if that's in this exhibit. The beer sculpture. Yeah. yeah. But you like, you know, the the, this is, which is way cool. That's all bronze. Oh, really? Yeah. That's not wood. Wow. That's cast. To cast bronze and then paint it <laughs> to look like his wow. pink can. Wow. Yeah, and so he did that after the cans. Wow. You know, which is. Right. It's like, you know, object to art. It was sitting there, so you know, this is his, his paint can. Yeah. 
Will they say you can't take pictures of that one? Yes, we won't. Thank you. What's the difference? No, that one is the problem. Yeah. I need to photograph that one. Some of them are... Taboo? Taboo. Yeah. Not so. Yeah. So, so you see the, the device again? Mm. The recurring... Scraping? Uh, yeah, this can... part of his deal, okay. scraping. Sorry. I love this one. Yeah, you do? What do you love? Supposedly, about? this is like... I think this was Bill Goldston's, no, I forget, it's somebody's child, Jasper's friend's child, and that's a cast of his arm. Oh, wow. And to me, it's like, kind of macabre, yeah. but that's what makes it interesting to me. And then the, the cartoonish drawing on the left, which to me is kind of, kind of relates to, um, Philip Guston, in a way, I, I, I'm thinking, but like, you know, like Jasper and Johns and Philip Guston are good buddies. Right. And, and Philip Guston was one of my heroes, because he went from pure abstraction to cartoon figures almost, not almost, right. completely. Yeah. So he was shunned for a number of years, and Jasper was one of his champions. And, and they were kind of talking to each other through their art. Yeah. I mean, the, the Jim and I made a print like that one. The, uh, yeah. yeah. It's okay. like a kind of like, try to like, you know, you try to emulate these people that you love. I can't do him. Yeah. Or I guess I could try. I tried a little bit. I've got a, one painting I've been working on for ten years, on and off. That has. that broke and I was tearing it apart at one time and now and it's, I wrapped it up and it's yeah I'm brewing it <laughs> in a weird way yeah yeah you know, art is a weird thing so I mean, like I was thinking I should throw this away yeah. and I can't so I have to store it which costs me space I mean I've yeah. got a storage at school but it's just was he, so he was borrowing from Marshall Duchamp a little bit I think so that. So the thing about him is that, like, he does these things that, like, how do you say it? They just seem like they shouldn't work. But like that. Nobody does that. Nobody cuts a yeah. corner out of the mat. If I did that, I'd think, what am I doing? But it works. Yeah. Now it becomes sculptural. Mm -hmm. Right. Because you know, he's smarter than me. <laughs> or the neon light, too. Yeah, I always wanted to do a neon, you know, you know, and that's definitely influenced Bruce Nauman, who's like Mr. Neon, you know? Here's another, here's another one of those. That was in that show, too. that stuff. Then he gets into the portrait of Dora Mar. If it was just a painting, I'm, I'm assuming it was just a painting. It, he always had had like a lot of uh, copies of other people's work around. And like you know, and this is Dora Mar's uh, Picasso's mistress. Uh, There's that bathtub again. Yeah. With it. With the, the with the uh, George Orr ceramics. With uh, the face of someone. Why do you think he kept putting the bathtub in? I don't get You know, he probably liked that bathtub. You know? <laughs> I liked it. It was, I, it was a I window to bathtub. the forest. Oh, Very yeah. relaxing place. Yeah. Yeah. This was at his place in Connecticut. Yeah, all these. Definitely down in Connecticut. This one, I don't know, but he had a tiny studio. It would take up the whole wall. <laughs> yeah, and then there's a child's arm, and like I don't know who belonged to the other arms, but like some, it might be John Cage, you know. I know. And, uh, if they have the painting here that I'm thinking about, it has um, uh, like a, a cast from uh, Barbara Rose. 
part of her butt, that her, and like somebody's hand, and, and like all this, you know, and then you have like that Picasso motif of the scarf hanging. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's in a lot of its pieces. Did he yeah. like Picasso, Picasso and an influence of his? Yeah. Yeah, a I lot. Like, I saw it, yeah. I mean, especially later. Yeah. Like, like that. This one, this one is a, I think it's said that it's saw something in national, about disassociation, I don't know, where like, you know, like the, the face and the nose and the mouth are, you know, not where they should be. Huh. And, uh, you know, that one, I know he was in Japan when he made that painting. And here's a really, this is one of my favorite paintings. This one belongs in the, in the Eli Broad. I used to go over to the Broad Foundation over in that speech yeah. just to see that. Is that still in by the Broad? But he got this little dish. You could get those in... Um, in Japan, you could get your face on a dish at like a little shop. Oh. And he just thought it was funny. Then he put it on his painting, and, and that's him. And the mir the flashlight's supposed to shine into the dish, oh. which is right. kind of goofy, you know, fun. Yeah. stage in his career where he starts using figurative, figurative stuff, like shadow of himself, shadow of the same child with, with the, the uh, wax arm, he also makes prints of that particular motif, it's like, a, I think it's like summer, fall, winter, spring, I don't know which one would be spring, I guess the one on the left maybe, and that would be, this winter obviously is that so that's Fall. him in shadow? Yeah, that's what I think. Sort I think of it's a like self-portrait, yeah. yeah. Like a summation. Right. Mm -hmm. Except he had so much more to do after that. Yeah. You know? you know, it's just kind of a summation of stuff up to that point. He's got like the George Orr vase, the device shape, the flag, the Mona Lisa, the crosshatch, the... Uh, I don't know if there's any flagstones. I don't see any flagstones. But he also made a really nice set of prints illustrating these paintings. And, and these are some that, like, they're so simple, I don't know what to think about them. So I hold my judgment, because <laughs> later it will come back and sting me. <laughs> This one, I'm not sure what that is right there. It's definitely Picasso. And this yeah. part here could be from the Eisenheim altarpiece, uh, like a fallen soldier, but I'm not sure. I don't think so. But it's uh, definitely two faces. Ooh, odd one. What material is that? Watercolor. Yeah. This is monotype. This is a so basically, he just had these shapes, and you roll ink on the shapes, and then you put the paper on top of the shapes, and you run it through a press, and you get a mono print. One. One. And if you want to do that again, you have to put the, see how it smudges here? Yeah. Apparently he didn't care, you know, it's just, see that, the spotty effect, is just from the way the paper is contacting the oh. ink, because it's, I know he did lithographs of this. And so you have that shape again and again. And then, you know, this image? Yes. 
where you, you know, if you look at it one way, it's a young woman, and if you look at it another way, it's a rich old woman. The old, old woman's nose. Oh yeah. Young woman's eye. Yeah. That's wild. But it's like you know, it's kind of an optical illusion yeah. thing. Oh, this is this figure here is a fallen soldier from the Eisenheim altarpiece. And, and like basically, maybe it's in there. But like the, I don't know if I see that painting. This is another etching, which is kind of easier for me to talk about etchings. Yeah, sure. I can go on and on and on and on. <laughs> but basically, you know, he's got, I don't know how to see it. It looks like it's cut here. I know that's one shape for sure. It's either four or five shapes. And so, <laughs> so that's just ink wash. favorite paintings and because uh, I think it's called Green Angel but he won't tell anyone what the uh, subject matter is from I mean it looks like like a Madonna or something or a Madonna and child but he won't tell anyone and it's got the Picasso the eye and nose and mouth you know from Picasso influence I think I think it's and there's another gray one but I saw that show in New York and I have the poster. It's just like, he mixed sand with the wax to get it to have that grainy effect. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's his, um, I think that's his father up there. On the right. I remember, he pointed it, pointed it out to me one time. Strange that they don't have. This is one, the print, they called it, um, I don't know if they called the print Tar Baby or something, but this is, looks like a collage. And they don't have the print here, but this is like some new work that I, I kind of like this one. Yeah. You know, it's just like, to me, is this more interesting than these catenary paintings? Yeah. And then this one which is another summation. So it's got the green angel. It's got imagery, you know, like words, blue from like periscope painting. It's, yeah. it's got the fallen soldier from the Eisenheim altarpiece. It's got the um, blueprint. blueprint of his parents' house in North Carolina. Oh, wow. So, That's pretty cool. a lot of stuff. Yeah. And, um, That's... but I sure like that green angel. Like this one? Yeah. The way the eyes bounce around on that one. Okay. I don't know if I've seen that one. stuff going on. Well, no. What final else? room over final here. Final room over here. Who's 
doing this for a long time. These, they're like supposed to represent uh, like a cloth. Yeah, like this kind of idea. Yeah, yeah. And then see this, and then you make prints where and there's a fallen soldier again. So there's like a lot of, a lot of these motifs that are re, re, keep recurring. You know, he's got like the Harlequin pattern. Yeah. He's got the Harlequin pattern. Constellation. Constellation. The hanging cloth. Um, it's, a France, it's an image taken from a Francis Bacon photograph, and I think it's like Lucian Freud sitting on a bed. <laughs> it's Lucian it Freud yeah. sitting on a bed. There's a face in the middle, too. And this is like a skull, and then I don't know exactly what that shape, it looks like a breastplate. Here's an intaglio, the same thing. These are like some of those more recent things. Yeah. And um, he did like, I don't know, 15 or 20 versions of that, you know, with, with spit bite and acid tint. This one I've never seen before. I like that. This one? Farley breaks down. I have no idea what this is. <laughs> Probably it's in the catalog. That looks like a small version. What do you think Farley is? After Larry Burroughs. They wouldn't call it William Larry, would they? No. Nah. Uh, well, when did he die? I don't know. I've got to check that one out. But basically, this is a big aqua tent with scraping and brushing and stuff on a lot of work. Crazy amount of work. There's all those gradations. To create those tones. Yeah. And the, the thing that's amazing is he's willing to do that. Nowadays, with like. I've talked to him about certain photo processes. He says, before I even finish the sentence, he says, I'm old fashioned. <laughs> he doesn't want to do it. Right. And he doesn't even want to talk about it. He wants a certain texture of reality. Yeah, he's like, got some way, one way he works, and that's good enough. I don't know, it's like, looks like it's got images from, from like, uh, there's a painting called Dutch Wives. I don't, I don't know if it's been in the, I don't think it's in the show. But like, you know, there's this. To me, those dripping patterns are always pretty phallic. And um, got the Harlequin shapes again, and shadow of the string. And, and the, coming out of the canvas with, with the pieces of wood so that you know, basically throwing you back a bit. I don't know, to me these are more like kind of like soft and Yeah. but great. Right. Yeah. I don't know. And there's the there's the flagstones again. You know, which is I think more recent. Looks it's got flagstones with cross hatching inside. It's too bad. 
1983 to 2005. He's been painting that since then, since 83 to 2005. That's a long time. So obviously he wasn't, wasn't sure about it. I guess it's finished since it's here. <laughs> Do we one final we go back and look at something? I think we're good when yeah. how just seeing all this stuff does it bring up any final memories or feelings or thoughts about um, I wrote him a letter a few years ago and telling him I was gonna come and visit him and, and that um, and I need to find his address and write him another letter and go visit him before we both aren't existing on the planet anymore since you know, uh, Tom Nectar told me if I had a chance to go visit Jasper Johns I would do it really quick yeah. or not not because he's older but because he has a chance yeah he's, he'll talk to me what he, he likes letters he doesn't like letters in more ways than one no, if I call him he won't come to the phone yeah if I write him a letter he'll say okay come by well, I'm sure seeing this kind of major one to speed up that process. I do, yeah, I want to go check them out. But, um, yeah, I'm coming back here tomorrow. I'm going to walk through this one more time and, and see what happens. And I'm wondering if that's my friend sitting over there. Well, thank you so much, Tony. Well, this meant a lot to Did it us. work? It really worked well. Huh? And thank you I for mean, tuning in. And if, and, do I need uh, to do any more? No, I think we're one.